What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Move the Sticks, the 360 series. Daniel Jeremiah joined by Bucky Brooks, my partner. And we have one of the most versatile players in this year's draft class, Thomas Duarte. What, what do you want to be called, Tom? You want to be called tight end, H-back, wide receiver? What do you prefer? Whatever whatever they want to name me. I mean, that's that's my position. So right now, all three of those sound, sound real good. Well, first thing I noticed when you walked in is that I, I saw you play uh, later in the season against USC. And to me, it looks like you've bulked up a little bit since the end of the season. A little bit. Not necessarily bulked up, put on bad weight, but muscle. Mm -hmm. I mean, gotten stronger, gotten faster. So I'm, I'm comfortable where I'm at, though. Uh -huh. Yeah, what did you play it during a regular season? Like, what were you? What were I you played it around 225, 220, uh, 230, 225. So. And now you're getting closer to 240 yeah. right now. Yeah. Look at that, man. Man's getting getting in the weight room. He, <laughs> he got some, some some big meals. So I knew, uh, who was it? Oh, I guess it was, was it New Heisel? Yeah. Yeah, who went on the thing about the nutrition, about how you guys, you don't get enough food. Are they feeding you at UCLA, oh, Thomas? Oh, man. Since that new rule came out, they haven't stopped feeding us. <laughs> <laughs> Does that change things for you? Oh, yeah, definitely. For the better, though, really, for the better. You know, Thomas, having been here locally and watching you at Modern Day High School and watching you kind of grow and mature at UCLA, you're a big-time wide receiver in high school. Then they kind of played you in a hybrid role at UCLA. What was that transition like, going from being a guy that was outside a lot in high school to now playing inside and doing some tight end-like things? It was a little different, I mean, in terms of the outside wide receiver game and then the inside slot position. The the slot position you have, you can go inside, outside. So your leverage game, you, you got to know kind of where you want to set up, what body leverage you want to use. But And then the inside game is a lot faster than the outside. I mean, the outside you can set up routes and everything like that, but the inside you got to know where you're going and get there fast. So i got to tell you, I want, one of the things I do with, with pass catchers is I'll go through, and we have this, this cool program, NFL Vision, so I can sort every single target that got thrown to a player, so I can watch every ball that got thrown to you over the last year. And when I did that, man, I saw you not only, you know, breaking people down underneath. I saw you get down the scene. You're a big-time threat with your speed being able to work down the middle of the field. I want to say it was the SC game even last year mm. where you went off went off in that game as well. That big play ability, is that kind of your calling card at that spot? Yes, sir. It's always been my, my uh, spot in the team. Uh, just attacking those those little holes in the defense. I mean, I used to play quarterback, so I kind of know the defense, and it's really helped me out in, in terms of switching positions and playing the receiver spot because I know, you know, the backers got to drop to the flat or the safety has to has to cover this area. So it just helped me out a lot. But definitely that those seams and everything like that are, are really my spot. So this process has been probably a long process, come from the end of the season to now we're on the, the eve of the draft. What has the process been like for you with the interviews and the workout? How have you managed it all? Just, you know, being focused at all times. I mean, they talk about going from being an amateur to a professional. I mean, you really got to step it up. You really got to be on top of your game on and off the field. And that's one thing I've noticed. And uh, I'm trying to pick up and trying to turn my game around to be a professional not only on the field but off the field. Buck, you want to break down some tape here? Yeah, this is one of the fun guys to watch. You talk about going to vision and watching the touch tape. When, when I had a chance to watch you at UCLA, the thing that I was really impressed with was your movement skills, your route running ability and your sticky hands, your ability to work open and create separation, the way they use you in the slot, the way you're Ooh. able to make big plays, those things are attractive. And the way the NFL game is going, we're always looking for those mismatched nightmares, those guys that create chaos when they're on the field. You certainly have that ability to do so. The only uh, problem that I would have is trying to figure out, do you have the ability to block well enough and the physicality to be a inline tight end or can you be a h guy that can occasionally block and do some of those things i think you know i've gotten that question a lot the inline tight end you know can you block can you do this um i mean i can't i know i can i mean if there's a team out there that's gonna put their trust in me and, and invest their time i got no choice but to you know reciprocate and give them the, my best ability so i mean whether it's putting my hand in the ground and blocking the DN coming down or going up to the second level and blocking the linebacker, I'm going to do it no matter what, and I'm going to give my best effort. So I know over time that I'll be a, I'll be a better blocker than I am now. You're going to get paid for what you do catching the ball, though, man. So be competitive. Yeah, be competitive. Just, just be competitive just as get a blocker. Yeah. I don't just need you to be an assassin out there. I just need you to be competitive in the blocking right. game. You're going to make your money catching the rock. Uh, Bucky, when I've watched him, and we talked about him a bunch throughout the process because just you're a fun guy to watch, the comparison that I came up with is one of those deals where I throw out a name to him, and he goes, you know what, I, I said the exact same thing. So normally we have different players, but the same name came to mind for both of us in Jordan Reed. Jordan Reed from the Washington Redskins, a guy that really 
uh, broke out on the scene last year, being able to dominate and control the middle of the field, but also having the ability in empty formation and spread sets to be able to use outside, inside, to really take advantage of the mismatches. And we thought that you had that potential to be able to kind of be that movable chess piece to take advantage of what the defense does. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop some video into the monitor, and we want you to kind of look at Jordan Reed and kind of tell the viewers what you see in his game and any of the things that you can steal from his game. This is him down at the bottom of the screen. Definitely the – I mean, he plays – he's a big guy that they use on the outside, but he plays so fast, quick in small areas. And that's one thing I've watched throughout the whole season, just watching his progression of – of becoming this standout that we see now, this Jordan Reed player that that we that we watch on Sundays, but just watch how quick he is. I mean, when they usually when they flex that big guy, you think I'll oh, fade to the yeah, corner yeah. of the end zone, yeah. but I mean he's playing off that off the defender, so he uses his quickness to beat him on the inside. All right, let's go to the next play here. Once it's against Buffalo. The they match him with a safety. We saw this a bunch last year. Yeah, same. I mean, he cuts his split down, gives him that himself that space to just work work his stuff and I mean that's what you're, you're going to get when you put a guy like that out there on the outside. Then the red zone you scored a number of touchdowns at UCLA what is your go-to route when we get into the red zone when we're close to the end zone what is the one that you're hoping that the, the office coordinator dials up for you? Def well this past season the corner route definitely I mean my I got like one against SC I was at that game. Yeah, got yeah. one against them but uh definitely the corner route I mean when I set the guy up, I can. I know once I make my stick and I beat him to that pylon, I can use my body. I'm I'm big enough to where I can use my body and catch it over the shoulder. And I mean, the quarterback just has to put it out there, and I'm gonna go get it. Oh, we got one more play here, I believe. Third play. Let's see, here he is. There's the working in the post. seam. Right. Yeah. See, that's just just knowing the concept. I mean, he's got such great vision and route running skills that he knows the pockets that that he needs to be at. And I mean. Quarterback puts it right on the money as well. You know, talk about that. Being a route runner at tight end is a little different than running routes as a wide receiver. Yeah. How long did it take you to adjust in terms of being more patient or understanding how to set those big guys up in between the hashes? It took a little bit of time, but I had such a great coach, Eric Yarber at UCLA. I mean, he took the time and patience to watch film, watch extra film with me and kind of show me, you know, this is what you should be doing. This, is this I think, would help you. So I implemented that in my game and practice every day in spring ball and just develop my game over time, and that's you know that's what I got last year. Did you wear the eye black when you guys rocked all the eye black out there? I know there's certain yeah. games. I don't know what it was. Certain games I saw coaches with you know, <laughs> face paint on, like they were getting ready to go into battle, man. Yeah, everybody. I mean, it was a war paint game, so we all buy into it, and and we always get that W. So. What did you come with though? Did you just come with the the, the two? Oh, I just lines? went with the two lines straight to simple. Position. I mean, you're yeah. gonna you're gonna get the same thing every game, so yeah. might as well. I want to say it was maybe your D tag. It was Eddie Vanderdoes a couple years ago or something. Came all like, black, like all it was, it was a little much. Yeah. yeah, it was all over the top. Oh, a little I like the two line. That. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I like that. Two I, that's me, classic. <laughs> Very classic. classic. Yeah, I'm all right there. And one more question for you, though. Modern day, who is the best athlete that ever went to your high school? The best athlete? Yeah, in it, terms could be of any, every it could be any sport. Modern day is a powerhouse. That's true. That's true. Um, you can go football players. I mean, there's so many great athletes, but I'd have to say I'm I'm in the top five, definitely. He put himself in the top uh, five. I like that. I, I, watched, I like that. I, watched, I like uh, that. Uh, big shout out to Stanley Johnson though the other night playing against LeBron. He's a great athlete, good friend. But uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we have so many great athletes that I don't think you can put your finger on one of them. But definitely powerhouse school. Yeah, that's for sure. One of the best, uh, one of the best athletic programs in the entire country. You did a, a nice job, by the way, Thanks. helping this UCLA program turn everything around. You're one of our favorite players to watch. We wish you the best of luck as you, you march towards the draft. H back, tight end, wide receiver. <laughs> Touchdown matter. maker. Touchdown maker. He's a playmaker. He can do it all. Thomas Duarte, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for having me. All right, that's it for this edition of Move the Sticks 360. Daniel Jeremiah, Bucky Brooks. Offensive weapon is what I'm coming with here, Thomas sure. Duarte. If you've missed any of our series, be sure to go to NFL.com slash Move the Sticks 360. You can see I think we got over a dozen interviews now with some of the best players in this draft class. You can check that out, as well as go to YouTube. You can find them all there as well.